and I can scoop. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm Linda Shearer. I'm the interim executive director here at HCP, the Houston Center for Photography. And I'm delighted to have you all here. And we're especially pleased to have Jessica speaking tonight. Uh, and we, um, uh, Muriel spoke, to, was it two weeks ago? About two weeks ago. Um, and then uh, soon will be Stephanie, uh, where's Stephanie? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whose installation is behind Jessica's. And uh, I just wanted to just say that this exhibition was organized by Dorota Bichelle, who was the previous curator, and we are delighted to have it uh, up for, when, when does it close? I have it here. Uh, uh, November 27th. That's that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And um, special thanks to Andre Ramos Woodard, who is our exhibitions and program coordinator. Oh, one title. Yeah, I, 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 I usually get it mixed, it mixed up and turned around. But, uh, uh, but Andre has been a key factor in terms of the installing the exhibitions and working with the artists. And he is going to introduce, introduce Jessica uh, to you, and then Jessica will speak. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Linda, um, yes. sweetheart. Uh, so, for those, of you, for those of you that do not know me, I am Andre Ramos Woodard, as Linda said, and I am the Exhibitions and Programs Coordinator at the ACP. Um, and I just must say, it's been honestly a pleasure, I'm pretty new to the ACP, it's been a pleasure to work with such an amazing staff, but in general, it's specifically, it's been so great to work with such amazing artists like Jessica, um, Mirna, and Stephanie. They have been an absolute pleasure, so I'm so excited to be able to share that one with you guys. But anyway, I will, I'll, I'll read now. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today at the Houston Center for Photography, of which lies on the traditional land of the Coate tribe. We're here in celebration of Jessica and her work in our current exhibition, Beyond the Record. Jessica Carolina Gonzalez is an interdisciplinary contemporary artist and organizer from Houston, Texas. In her work, Gonzalez utilizes traditional archives and the archives of her bloodline as tools for storytelling and critique in a post-colonial landscape. As a product of the Central American diaspora, her lineage has been shaped by war, displacement, surveillance, grief, and spirituality. Through her artistic practice, she collapses timelines and narratives to complicate the American understanding of ever-present socio-political issues embedded within her own work. She creates to preserve her narrative because her communities are often absent or misrepresented in the dominant visual culture. Gonzalez's work has been exhibited by the Law Warsaw Gallery in St. Paul, Minnesota, Remezka's Tejas Made Art Gallery, and Art Lee Houston. She has been an invited panelist for the art conference Latino Art Now, a Latino art symposium founded by the Inter-University Program for Latino Research uh, and for Art in the Space of Social and Political Advocacy, hosted by the Houston Coalition Against Hate. Um, she was a finalist for the Houston Artadia, Artadia? Artadia Award, was awarded, the <laughs> <laughs> um, was awarded the first prize for the juried Latinx exhibition with Stand at the Holocaust Museum Houston, and is a recipient of the Idea Fund, funded by the Andy Warhol Foundation. Gonzalez is currently an MFA candidate at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And without further ado, Ms. Jessica. Thank you so much. Um, so I just want to make everyone aware that I do have an interpreter here for my family. And um, so, Si quieren moverse o acomodarse de alguna manera para que puedan escuchar al intérprete, eh, pueden hacerlo. ¿Qué opinan? ¿Están bien así? ¿Escuchan? Ok, muy bien. 
Um, so for that reason, um, for that accessibility reason, I'm going to read my artist statement to everyone. A slower pace. Um, you know, so, so try to stay awake again. Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my artist talk. Um, I hope everyone has had the chance to see the artwork within the gallery and has been able to spend time with it. I'm so happy to have my art piece as Manucha be in conversation with Muriel Haspen's work and Stephanie Concepcion Ramirez's work. Um, I'm grateful to Dorota Bezel. Uh, for curating me into this exhibition and listening to me as an emerging artist looking for more representation of Central American expression in this field. I'm also thankful for Delilah Montoya's support in undergrad and for helping me show a part of this work when I was initially working on it. My accomplishments are shared with the mentors and friends I've made, and of course, my family and my mother, Antonia Claro. I am a first generation Salvadoran and Honduran contemporary artist that works within performance, installation, and photography. I'm currently a graduate student at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles but I will always rep Houston with every five years. <laughs> so, don't get it. My work overall uses traditional archives and the archives of the bloodline, such as oral histories, family heirlooms, and body memory. I have been artistic all of my life and have been exhibiting art for about 11 years. I believe my interest in art and photography specifically came from seeing my mother photograph moments that she never wants to forget. Sometimes I would take her disposable camera and take photos of her or of the ocean when we would go to the beach with my father. Afterwards, I was gifted a mini point-and-shoot digital camera and would ask my friends to model for me and then went on to take traditional photography in high school, which is when I found out about HCP. <laughs> this is where I developed my passion for uh, more for photography through the very meditative process of developing my own film, printing photos by hand, um, experimenting through alternative processes and embracing imperfections that appeared by my own hand. I'm lucky to have had wonderful teachers at the time, Elena Jordan and Jolyn Laughlin, to nurture this passion of mine early on and encourage me to continue exploring it. I worked on my BFA at the University of Houston in photography and digital media under the instruction of Delilah Montoya, Kelly Anderson Staley, and Sebastian Bonsi. There, I also met Tia Simone Gardner and Dorota Bazell, who were also instrumental in helping shape my understanding of who I am as an artist. I work from a personal and intimate perspective. My lineage as a product of the Central American diaspora has been shaped by war, grief, surveillance, and spirituality. There is a legacy before me of artists working within these themes to denounce military and political oppression happening in Central America. Regina Jose Galindo, Angel Pollón, Virginia Perez Raton, to name a few, and of course, Muriel Hasban and her mother's gallery in Laberinto in El Salvador existing during the Salvadoran Civil War speaks truth to that fact. I struggle when thinking about how central my identity is to my work because I use my work to complicate the American understanding of ever-present social political issues, including my own. I work through these contemplations through a visual language. Being of Central American descent and still dealing with the passed down trauma that was generated by U.S. intervention and colonialism informs my work subconsciously, and this is at the core of my practice.
Es una lucha is a project that was born in response to the threat of instability. In this work, you will find documents from my mother's immigration archive that were, we were able to obtain because of the Freedom of Information Act and images from my family archive. Some of the pieces in the display are representational and untouched. Others are layered with meaning and visual elements such as auras of color and overlays of legal documents and multiple images to draw parallels between the layers. The pieces are arranged in a salon-style display on a mustard tone wall emulating a family living room. Right? <laughs> this piece was conceptualized in 2016. Besides the clownery happening at the White House in 2016, <laughs> that year was also the year that I turned 21 and was able to sponsor my mother's residency. My mother had tried everything 30 years prior to become a US resident, US resident but kept hitting one rejection after another. So 2016 was the year that we began the process of naturalization through me. I had grown up reading immigration documents to my mother and interpreting or translating them as soon as my reading comprehension allowed. After some time, you begin to normalize this immigration process of constant surveillance and check-ins. Being a part of the sponsorship process and looking through the immigration archives in a more complex way was very difficult. I saw accounts of the reason why my mom fled El Salvador, dates from when my father was deported, portraits taken without reason, and accounts of myself and my half-brother. During the process, I was asked by my lawyer to write a letter of what would happen to me if my mother were to be deported and provide images from my family archive showing my mother's presence throughout my life to accompany the letter. I was essentially curating an experience for them, humanizing our situation to this agency that exists to repress and exploit immigrants and refugees. As you all can imagine, I was pissed. <laughs> I had to put myself in a mental state of loss and grief while the person whose loss I was grieving was right beside me. It's a weird mental space to be in. While I was looking through these separate archives, I became even more frustrated. I realized how much of my body and my family's bodies are captured in these papers and how much these papers inform the conditions portrayed by the images in my family archive. None of these accounts exist independently from one another. Our lives have been forcibly shaped by these systems of categorization and surveillance. These archives function as a double system, a system of representation that functions both honorifically and repressively. The project started with collecting and scanning images, audio, and video. Once I was done collecting and installing, I kept working on this project until its final form as a book. The artist's book is in this gallery tonight. <laughs> um, a copy of it, but yeah. It's all good. If you want to look at it, please um, feel free. Um, either way, all of the images in the book are represented in this install. I think of this project as a condemning of immigration policy in this country, a condemning of its extractive interventions that have displaced and murdered my family, as well as a love letter to my family. It's a huge honor to have my work in conversation with the artists in the gallery that are working through these legacies of violence through a visual language that perhaps conveys more, a lot more than words can say. Thank you.